we'll be talking about self-sufficiency and the team toolkit. Self-sufficiency is one of the core methods of accompaniment. As a review, it's vital that in every accompaniment decision we consider, do I need to step up or do I need to step back in this specific moment? This way you can maintain healthy boundaries and we're never doing for people what they can do for themselves. It's normal for there to be a natural progression to self-sufficiency, where perhaps you're stepping up more the first month of accompaniment and stepping back closer to six months in. By the six month mark, families should have the same knowledge about resources in the community as you do. So your role will transition to be not so much to introduce them to resources as to support them if a barrier arises to the resources they encounter. Healthy boundaries are communicating this process as you go along by having transparency when you're intentionally stepping back and constantly communicating your intention of where we are in the process that now we're working towards self-sufficiency. I'm guiding you to resources now, and later my role will be more to help you if there's a barrier to resources. A few practices to help you stay oriented towards self-sufficiency as you accompany others are, first of all, keeping self-sufficiency as the mindset. This is in contrast to the idea of fixing or rescuing people. If you're trying to fix problems, you will be overwhelmed. Look at this image with all the words around this, the circles. People can have all of these things going on at once that they are looking to improve in their lives. Truthfully, if someone is just arriving here, the needs for support are constant and they're constantly changing. They really don't stop and often crises arise, arise where they're reorienting their priorities. They never quote unquote arrive to having the, all their problems fixed. So we have to remember we're simply guiding them towards self-sufficiency, not fixing their problems. They can arrive to being self-sufficient to know where to go in the community for support and practical help. An example of this is if someone were to wait until, their, until a family's legal case or immigration case gets settled. Well, you may think that you're just gonna hang in there with accompaniment until that one specific thing resolves itself, but what you may not have realized is that immigration cases can drag out over several years and may not, not arrive to a resolution. Another strategy or practice in self-sufficiency is continuing to make the newcomer's priorities the center of what you're doing. Because truly accompaniment is about their lives they make decisions about their goals and what to pursue. Rather than looking at their lives and assuming they need what you, what you see, listen to see what they need and identify according to their reality and priorities. Once they know how to access the resource, they will decide whether to take the initiative to try to pursue it rather than you doing it for them. A third way is to stay grounded. Receive what they share about their lives and their problems with a listening ear. This is rather than responding as though you need to help them fix their crisis or their problem. Often they're sharing just to share between friends for support, moral support, not for you to take action and find the, the solution. They're living in this all the time, the idea of having constant crises and challenges. And so talking about those crises and challenges is just talking about 
the daily ins and outs of their lives. Families will establish their top three goals during the first goals and roles team meeting after being matched with a team. We'll then revisit those goals at the three and six month mark, according to the NEAT model. Of course, your team is welcome to revisit those goals all along the way. Remember to stay focused and goal oriented. You really can't take everything on at once. Just these three goals. The realities and asks are many, but based on what they say their priorities are, you have direction of how you can assist. Also, remember to be creative. Re resources can be a lot simpler than you think. For example, if someone was to be experiencing hunger, that doesn't mean that you need to find them a job so that they can pay for food. It doesn't even necessarily mean that you need to find a way for them to get to the local food bank. It may simply be informing them of a more affordable grocery store in their neighborhood. Maybe that will be all that they need. Likewise, if they need have an appointment, that doesn't mean that it's your responsibility to find them a ride or pay for an Uber if they can't find a ride. It might be that you indicate to them how to use public transportation to get there. Lastly, make sure that you're patient when and if their goals ch change. Due to poverty and decision-making, you may need to repeat information about resources you've told them about and be willing to let things go if they never do access those resources. Be sure to keep checking in to see if there were any barriers that came up to those resources in case you can help them problem solve. Problem solving may be as simple as modeling self-advocacy because in our system, in the United States, often the squeaky wheel gets the grease, which is a very different approach than the culture of humility and accepting an acceptance that families are coming from. We have and will provide to every team member a toolkit that will be your one stop shop for reference materials and resources. With reference re materials, you'll have access to train past recordings of trainings and modules, various team guidelines, and more information about the NEAT model and materials to support your team meetings. We'll talk more about these reference materials and the resources that are in the team toolkit. In the resources section, you will see community resources, congregational resources, and interfaith movement for human integrity organizational resources. We ask that you first try to access community resources. Second, turn to your congregation. And third, reach out to the NEAT coordinator to see if we have any other ideas or connections of ways we can help you. Let's look at the team toolkit together in order so that to make sure you know how to use it. When you open the team toolkit on Google Drive, this is what you'll see. You'll see toolkit instructions, which is basically what I'm saying here. And you'll see a folder for resources and a folder for reference materials. When I look at the reference materials, I have trainings, both previous trainings and the most current training materials, which include a recording and the slides for the most recent training that you all attended 
and a list and links to the modules.